All right, folks, so in today's video, we're gonna to try to solve a problem that I have. And we've been doing some tests on these Balfang radios, and I wanna be able to inject a signal into here. This is the uh, microphone port, and it uses a 3.5 millimeter jack. And so I looked around in my parts box, and I had some of these 3.5 millimeter, uh, I don't know what you call them, plugs. And when you open them up, you can kinda of see, let me see if I can get it closer to the camera. And there we go. You have a sleeve, a tip, and a ring connector. It corresponds with, here's your sleeve, your ring, and then your tip at the end. And what I need to do is I need to take some wire and I need to hook it up to here. And then I had some of these in the parts bin too. And uh, what this will allow me to do is to put a BNC termination on one end. And so I'm pretty excited about this because what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to take this BNC adapter, plug this directly into my signal generator, and uh, then I'll be able to take the other end of this, plug it into the Balfang, and then I'll be able to inject my signal. So what we're going to do to make this project happen is, is I cut about two feet of, this is 18 gauge speaker wire, and uh, I think it's I think it's copper coated, uh, copper clad aluminum, I'm not 100% sure, well, it'll work fine either way, um, but we're going to get started on this build and see how it goes. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to prepare this wire. And so what I have is just a uh, box cutter razor blade and I'm just gonna slice the end of this a little bit. And then hopefully this will just pull apart nice and easy. And it does. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, these wire strippers to uh, just go ahead and pull some of the coating off of this wire. That looks about right. I can't see anything, so I don't know. And there we go, we got some copper. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Now you don't need much. And uh, this is gonna be some small soldering, which I'm not the best at. And uh, there we go. And uh, that should be plenty to do what we need to do. Let me go get some uh, helping hands or something like that so we can get to work. So one of the things I wanted to remind people about doing was is that make sure you put this screw on case on the wire before you do any work. Otherwise, you're going to have some headaches. Um, the other end's unterminated, so I could just feed it up if I wanted to. But uh, here it is regardless. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up the soldering iron, and it usually makes some noise and interference. So we're going to go audio silent, and I'm going to just tin these tips a little bit and then figure out where we're going to solder them. All right, I believe we have a reasonably clean solder tip there. Um, we're at 650 degrees, which is about where I like to solder. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of solder on the tip. And then what I want to do is I just kind of want to heat this wire up a little bit. And uh, just get a little bit on there. And I think that'll do it. Now let's go over to this side. And I think that'll do it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, our plug ready. And what I've done is I've tested this out with a multimeter already, so I know which ones we want to do. We want the all black line to go to the sleeve, which is this longer piece. And then these, um, the red is going to go to the, uh, the ring, which is the center part of this, which is this slightly longer one. All right, hopefully, hopefully everybody can see that, all right, and uh, hear me, all right. So we have the... the the negative or the black wire that's coming up and I pinched it right here. I don't know if you can see that. And you can see where we soldered the end of it and it's feeding through the bottom portion of the sleeve connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get jammed in there with this soldering iron and uh, we're going to gloop some solder on and uh, hopefully this works out okay. And I'm having a heck of a time seeing what I'm doing. But uh, I think we got it. Now we want to get the uh, part ready for the ring. All right, I think we're all lined up and, uh, and ready to go here. All right, and I think we're connected. All right, the next part is going to be encase this with the uh, screw-on part. 
Now, when we screw this on, it is, uh, it's rather easy. It sh at least it should be. Uh, what you want to make sure is that this thing is in there straight or as straight as you can get it. And then you just twist this baby on. And uh, there we go. And uh, that's reasonably straight. Now, what I want to do is I want to do a quick continuity test to make sure that I don't have anything in this thing touching. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to test to make sure that none of these three um, are touching each other and they're isolated. So let's grab the multimeter. So for the multimeter, we're just using this quick NANG. I turn it to ohms, resistance, and continuity. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit that button. When I get that little speaker up there, that lets me know that if my two probes are touching, we get some noise there, which means that there is electrical continuity, which we should not have. So I'm going to put this right here on the shield part. And I'm going to touch this and I get nothing. Touch that and I get nothing, so we're, we're in business. And when I touch both of them to the shield, it should make that noise. So there's the end of our cable. That was nice and easy. Uh, let's get the next part done. All right, so what we want to do here is we just want to check the continuity on this little do doodad, this doohickus, and uh, make sure we're doing everything right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my probe and I'm going to put it into the negative side, which is right like that. And then I'm going to take the other probe and I'm going to touch it to the shield. And then I'm going to touch it to the inner shield. And we have continuity there. So let's go ahead and get everything wired up for that. All right, so what we've done is we've stripped the wire. And you can see that right here. And then these are called for rule connectors. And they're a type of crimp for wires. And I put a black one on our negative side already. And they're pretty easy to do. You just take your wire and you put it in here. And then you slide it in, you make sure it goes all the way down. And these are really handy because I can put them into this terminal clamp here and uh, it makes it nice and easy. So what we do need is we need a pair of ferrule crimps and we have those right here. So I'm just going to open this baby up. I'm going to put this in there and I'm going to give it a squeeze and I'm going to unlock it and we're done. And see how that puts a nice clean finish on the end of these? Love it. All right, let's go ahead and get the other side. And we're done. And so what I'd want to do is I'd want to take the black end and I'd put it in there like this. And then I would just tighten that down with a screwdriver. So let me grab my screwdriver real quick and we'll do that. All right, this thing's trying to get away. And uh, so what we're going to do is just going to hold it like that. We're going to get our screwdriver and just tighten this baby down until it feels nice and snug. And then we're going to tighten it a little bit more. And now I'm going to do the same thing for the red. I just got to, I got to open it up a little bit and get on in there and see what's nice about these ferrule connectors is it takes a lot of the strain or stress off of the, um, the copper that you have the strand, the stranded wire. And it makes this a much more uh, secure and durable uh, connection. So let's just tighten this baby up. Now, this is a little messy for me. I like to have it a little bit cleaner. So I want to tidy this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find some heat shrink. And then we're just going to encase all this in heat shrink. Let me find that real quick and we'll be right back. All right. So what we have here is a piece of heat shrink. And we're going to put this on. And that's going to cover this part up. And uh, I have my air gun that I got from Harbor Freight sitting right here. Um, hopefully this works well. We'll find out if it does or if it doesn't. And this is the Drill Master heat gun, in case anybody wants to play along at home. I don't expect this to get fully tight here, but we got a couple of tricks up our sleeve. Ooh, that's hot. And that shrank up more than I expected that it would. Um, here you go. And uh, I don't want to burn myself on that thing. Whoop, I just did. And that looks pretty good. We have one more piece of heat shrink, which is the big boy, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that on the outside. And we're going to shrink that down right about there. So there's the end of the plug, and uh, that doesn't look too bad, right? Let's see if we can get another piece on the back just to kind of clean this up. Ooh, that thing is hot, hot. 
All right, so what I did is I got an extra piece of heat shrink and I slid this over the other end. And as you can see, it comes up and it overlaps with what we just put on. And uh, let me go ahead and shrink this down and uh, see what we got. All right, and we're back. And uh, here we go. So we have a nice, solid, sturdy end here. Maybe that's a little bit of overkill, but that's kind of how I like to do it. Um, I feel that that's going to be a good connection. It's built to last. And then uh, over here on this side, we have our tip ring sleeve 3.5 millimeter jack. So, all right, this is just a, a quick interruption. We thought that the cable was done. I was talking to my buddy Thump uh, about the cable because that's what I do with Thump. He's a good guy at that stuff. And what he told me was is that I should put a capacitor on the signaling line uh, about halfway through. So it's going to be right about here. So we're going to do that. And he said to use a 0.1 um, microfarad capacitor. So I looked in the capacitor parts boxes. And sure enough, I got a whole mess of them right here. Now, this is a really, really small um, ceramic capacitor. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one of them out of here. And then we're going to hook this up to the meter and test it just to make sure that it does what we're expecting it to do. And then uh, we're going to put that in line with this wire uh, once it checks out okay. So let's do that right now. So we just tested the component in our Fenirsi DSOTC2 component tester slash oscilloscope. And uh, it's reading right here, you can see 97.19 nanofarad, which is pretty dang on close to 100 nanofarads. And 100 nanofarads is 0.1 microfarad. So uh, we should be good to go. This is within tolerance. So let's get to work. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this razor blade and I'm gonna split this twin line ever so slight and then I'm just going to pull this apart there we go and then I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to cut this wire right here there we go and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of this wire off because we don't need it. And then we're going to wire our capacitor in line here. And that's going to be, uh, I don't know, tight fit, something like that. So let's go ahead and strip some of this insulation off. And I like to just twist these up. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. gonna twist that up now that's the space that we have to work with so now we have our ceramic capacitor over here and you need to be careful with these ceramic capacitors when you're bending legs around because you can actually crack or break the ceramic inside the capacitor so you can see what I've done there is I bent the leg after the leg comes out um, just trying to be extra careful So what I didn't want to do is bend where the capacitor comes out of the ceramic coating. So let's just take a quick look. And uh, we got plenty of space to work with there. So let's get this in the helping hands and see what we can do. Okay, here we go. With a reasonably clean uh, tip, what we're going to do is we are going to tin the wire. And I should have my glasses on and I don't. So I really can't see anything. There we go. And that one's tinned up. Let's do this one. Oh boy, I really can't see. I should be watching on the computer monitor. It actually makes it a little bit easier. All right, they're both tinned. I want to get a little bit more over here. There we go. All right, now I got to figure out how I'm going to get that uh, <laughs> get that capacitor on there. So what I do have is a pair of super tweezers right here. So I think I'm going to utilize these. But how exactly I'm going to do this, I don't know. So let me figure that out real quick. All right, so I just kind of tacked that on there. Let me get this side and uh, see how this is going to work.
All right, I think we're good. I think we got everything on there. Let me uh, let me go ahead and take this off, take a look at it, and figure out how we're going to heat shrink this thing. All right, folks. So the camera was not rolling when we heat shrank the uh, the capacitor in line, but here you go, just some heat shrink, and it's uh, pretty simple stuff. And I'm pretty sure you can have a good imagination can figure out what that is. But uh, our cable's done. So the next thing is is uh, look for a video where we're going to test this out and see if it works for my use case. Anyhow, with that, I'd like to say thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks.